Many thanks for being with us. Um, we could actually uh, start by thinking about your relation to theater. How did it happen? Because you had uh, so many uh, interests at the beginning, uh, not only with theater, but around theater also, writing cr in art, theater criticism also. Uh, so how did it happen? Why uh, did you choose theater as a way of um, expressing and creating, after all. <laughs> uh, thank you to invite me for this conversation. Uh, that's true, my way to approach the theater was a little different from other experience, especially experience uh, in Central Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, because in Central Europe, generally, the, there is practically only one way. You go to the academy, to the theater school, then you you graduated uh, directing or dramaturgy or acting, and so you are professional. Uh, I started to to write about the theater and the arts generally uh, in late eighties. That was very important period uh, for former Yugoslavia. Uh, practically, I started in eighty six, eighty seven, uh, and I worked in last three or four years of. Uh, former country, which called Yugoslavia. Um, and Yugoslavia was very specific case, I think, in not just in Eastern Europe, but in Europe generally. Uh, in the time of uh, Cold War, and especially the time of the separation in two blocks, uh, Yugoslavia was some uh, isolated island, I think, in somewhere between two blocks. And the art scene was very developed. When I say art scene, uh, I think literature, uh, music, um, theater, and why? Uh, probably uh, Tito, uh, the communist leader in Yugoslavia, was the practically the only one in in communist bloc or in socialist bloc mm -hmm. that time who, and not just him, but all staff around uh, Tito, they preferred more. Uh, contemporary and avant-garde art and social realism. And that's very specific case. Yeah. Uh, I can give you some very interesting is examples because uh, the people who surrounded Tito, uh, Marshal Tito, uh, they, they were the members of uh, surrealistic movements in 20s and 30s. And his uh, friend and practically the most important intellectual in former Yugoslavia, uh, his name is Miroslav Krleža. Mm -hmm. uh, Krleža was uh, one encyclopedic uh, brain, mm -hmm. and he uh, he break with the socialist realism and with the former Soviet Union in late 40s. So practically in this country, uh, the idea of social uh, realism was just for a few few years after the Second War. So immediately in late 40s, in, in 50s, the contemporary uh, art was, uh, was favorite in some, uh, in some scale of, um, of, uh, of Tito's desires, how to promote the, the, the new country. And uh, uh, as you know, uh, in all uh, communist countries, it was kind of celebrations, uh, kind of uh, birthday celebrations of the of dictators or celebrations of the uh, independent days. And uh, uh, Tito, Tito or uh, ministers of, of culture, they invited generally the avant-garde artists to do it, uh, and not the uh, the artists connected with the um, thing with the rigid and very um, uh, strict rules. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can compare it with uh, Roland Barthes' idea uh, about the provocation. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, so if the, the regular art in Yugoslavia, when I say regular art, uh, in Belgrade probably you know the famous theater festival Bitev from late 60s. That was one of the first um, theater festival in the world who promoted the very avant-garde and very specific directors even in late 60s uh, Bitev invited um, 
the the famous names from American avant-garde. Uh, uh, then uh, Robert Wilson, but in 70s. And in the same time, they invited the, the radical directors from Eastern Bloc, mm -hmm. like Grotowski, Kantor, Anatoly Vasilev. So it was the point uh, of meeting of very, very different uh, styles, very different poetics. Uh, in 50s, the, the art movements in visual arts and the uh, uh, in contemporary music, uh, Cage was invited in Zagreb in the 50s. So uh, the ambience in, in culture, in arts, uh, was very uh, inspirative for, I mean, for young artists and for the people who wrote about the, the arts. And the, probably the question can be, uh, what was subversive in that? If so, if the avant-garde art was promoted like a state art, what is subversion? And that's interesting answer. Uh, in Yugoslavia, the the narrative art was kind of subversive. Uh, probably, um, maybe some of forbidden pieces or forbidden performances were more connected with the nationalist dramaturgy. When I say nationalist, uh, because as you probably know, Yugoslavia was composed by six different republics. And uh, if someone promoted in dramaturgy or uh, kind of national um, ideas, it was completely forbidden during the, the Tito's time. So I started in late 80s uh, after uh, Tito's death uh, in the situation of complete freedom, um, in the situation when the, the country has a lot of theater festivals. The new theater festival, Eurokaz, uh, was established in Zagreb in 87. And uh, what you can imagine, the first company invited in 87 was Raffaello Sanzio. And Raffaello Sanzio in 87 was completely unknown, unknown in Europe. And the, this Eurokaz festival promoted the names like uh, even Jan Fabre was not so, so, I mean, known in this time. He was like a young artist with uh, new ideas, also Anteres de Kersmacher, Rosas. And the late 80s was very, very important time uh, for me. And probably the decision to go from uh, writing about the theater uh, to direct connection with the uh, with the art production was created in Zagreb in late 80s and then in France in 90s. Mm. Uh, that's very interesting uh, actually because uh, it seems like the, the uh, uh, there was an experimental and international movement uh, that was being favored uh, within the Tito context actually. Um, so, uh, when uh, we think about your um, way of working and creating uh, and relating to theater, um, sometimes I remember that, that uh, phrase from Heine Müller who said, text and literature is very important because it resists theater. Um, is that so uh, with you, with yourself and your relation to text, te te textuality and texts? for theater also, mm -hmm. uh, that they resist uh, somehow um, the theater frame. Mm. Could you say that uh, with yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, my relation with the text uh, was created in university because I studied uh, comparative literature, French literature mm -hmm. and political science. Mm -hmm. uh, and. What was very, I mean, popular and very suggestive in also in this formative period in in eighties, the school of structuralism, especially in French studies, uh, and uh, my basic education uh, wasn't theater but literature in general. And uh, when I say text, for me, text uh, is conceived like a definition also by. Roland Barthes or structuralist version and structuralist interpretations of the of the text. For me, text is not just a play. I mean, in the theater, that's the reason. Uh, even in late uh, 80s, in 90s, I used the uh, 
uh, I want to say also Bart's term, uh, body of the text, not, not just the final um, prepared text for the for the theater performance, but I worked as a dramaturg in, in that time. And the notion of dramaturgy also in Central Europe is a little different. It's uh, the dramaturg is someone who is between, I think, uh, director, actors, and uh, he's in some way philosopher, uh, professor, uh, artist, and critic in the same way. So as a dramaturg, I worked with uh, many directors in in IT, in, in France, in Croatia, uh, Slovenia, directors like um, Christian Kolen in France or uh, Jean-Michel Bruyère, but I worked also with the young Krzysztof Warlikowski. Uh, he started in in 90s and he worked uh, many times in Zagreb in that period. And I worked also with the young generation of directors in this uh, post-studies uh, period. And how I treated the, the text, uh, working on some specific uh, materials, we uh, we uh, we tried to use really Heiner Müller's idea. We collected many many different versions of the of the text uh, texts. And uh, for me, uh, maybe the the most significant version is Heiner Müller's Macbeth. That's mm. probably mo my uh, most important performance. But for me. The, the Heiner Müller's relation with, the, especially with Macbeth, is very, very particular case even in his dramaturgy. Because in the beginning of his work in the theater, uh, he was a playwright uh, who wrote about the, the social context in Eastern Germany, in, in communist countries, but, but also he did some kind of adaptations of the novels of the play. And as we know, uh, in late uh, period of his, his work, he completely transformed the text, as famous case of, uh, of Hamlet in Hamlet Machine. But uh, Macbeth, after Shakespeare, that's the complete name uh, of the play, is very particular case because it's not the traditional adaptation. When we say adaptation, so it's like a dramaturgical interventions, maybe the new order, uh, some cuts in the play. That's, um, especially in tradition of Central Europe, that's the uh, conventional adaptation. And from other side, we have the creation of new play. But Macbeth is really something uh, which we can call uh, re, uh, rewriting or, or something which is uh, in the halfway between adaptation and creation of something new. And that's for me, it's um, this Müller's work on Macbeth. It's kind of manifesto uh, because Müller was for first time someone between uh, dramaturg, writer, and director, and he prepared the play like a, a text for director, and that's very important notion. Uh, so he was no di uh, dramaturg as. He was before, but he was a writer for director, and director was himself. And uh, I learned a lot from um, Miller's experience. And in the same time, I mean, same time in uh, uh, early nineties, I discovered two discovered in very, I mean, in intellectual and uh, also physical way. Two other authors uh, who are very important for me, Bernard Marie Coltes and Pier Paolo Pasolini. Uh, three of them can uh, I can say they they can create my pantheon. Uh, why? Because they are at the same time writers, uh, directors, and authors of uh, manifestos. And uh, when uh, when idea of post uh, uh, post drama theater was created, I think the experience of three authors was basic uh, level to to discover and to describe what is the post dramatic theater. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, exactly, uh, turning to this point, it is so important today when we think about the relation uh, of theatre to text textuality and uh, this uh, figure of the dramaturg as it was from Lessing on in the German mm -hmm. countries uh, somehow uh, uh, in between situation uh, uh, actually I it is still your place within theater because you have uh, as a career also uh, a career of um, um, directing theater as an institution and not only as a creator mm -hmm. of pieces and, and working within with actors um, so um, is it important for you to be uh, in between? Uh, I mean, deciding, deciding at the same time your um, creative space, but your institutional space, your communicative space also, because, because you're doing and working in these um, mixed spaces uh, between institution and mm -hmm. stage. Uh, uh, do you like to be the, in that place, in, in this relation of places? Yes, that's, uh, that's very, uh, I mean, non-stable, very ambivalent position. And I like very much. I, uh, as I told, I started in the theater like a critic, then dramaturge and then director. Uh, when I say director, like a metteur en scène or regisseur, and the director of institutions. Uh, my first performance as a director was um, uh, also adaptation uh, of the Pascal Quignard's novel, uh, The Name of Tongstip. And uh, that is very um, emblematic work. Because the novel or the book, the text was composed by three different parts. Uh, one was like a fiction. Uh, the second part was like a very intimate or uh, uh, kind of very, uh, very provocative uh, diary. And the third part was psychoanalytic interpretation of two parts. Uh, and my first work was created really with a, and for and in independent scene. And uh, very quickly for, uh, from, uh, from independent scene, uh, I, uh, I entered in uh, institutional yeah. theater, but, and I was invited to, to be director of uh, Croatian National Theater in Split for four years in late uh, 90s. But on the same time, I tried to keep my relation with the, relations with the independent scene, with the independent groups, with the young, uh, actors, directors, uh, uh, scenographers, uh, because I wanted to keep my, uh, how can I say, uh, my desire to the, to the text from one side to discover not just the new place. I think it's not important question because that's a very conventional thing, but to create some kind of di dialogue uh, with the writers, with the philosophers, uh, with the uh, with the artists generally. And so from this uh, first idea, work for, uh, on uh, Pascal Quignard's play, until the realization of uh, uh, we call from last season philosophical theater. So we found the, the new section in Croatian National Theater uh, from last season. We call philosophical theater. We invited uh, Julia Kristeva. She was the first one, like a guest of this uh, theater. Uh, why it's important? Because Julia Kristeva uh, presented her philosophy, her psychoanalytic approach, and then uh, she offered us her uh, reading, her interpretation of Santa Teresa. And then we tried to put together reading of one philosophical text, reading of play about Santa Teresa, uh, and discussion with the audience. For me, uh, Yves Michaud's uh, interpretation of contemporary art, like a mixture of uh, science, uh, of philosophy, of body arts, of a very uh, interdisciplinary uh, disciplines is is important, but the text is really in the in the center because I never. I mean, it's very uh, uh, it's it's tradition in in this part of Europe also to 
to create the performances without the text. I mean, something between choreography, uh, body performance, but my interest was always focused on text, but very uh, text in very large, large uh, sense, not just as as you know, the, the work on uh, Capital of Thomas Piketty is also one of the interpretation of this same and particular idea. Mm -hmm. And, and when, um, when we think about the possibilities of theatre today as a form of art, as, a, uh, as an art with an identity within the art scene today, um, actually, we understand that your relation to Texas is so so profound and, and has to do with, with theatre's way of knowing, a way of doing, uh, yes. Uh, but you pay uh, very particular attention to the role of uh, music also. And when we think about uh, creators as Goebbels or Christoph Martala that work so intensely with music, um, um, why is it music is uh, so important to you? What does music bring to the stage that fits into your own creation machine, I would say? Uh, I think there are a lot of different sources to explain this uh, connection with the music. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I, I was very uh, fascinated by American avant-garde theater in late uh, 60s and early 70s. And uh, uh, American avant-garde theater was really very, very strongly connected with the music. From other side, I was born in, uh, in the region of Dalmatia, south of Croatia, where uh, famous theater festivals in Split and Dubrovnik promoted the uh, idea of antique theater. But antique theater very connected with the contemporary and the traditional music. And uh, also my uh, uh, journalist connection with uh, rock music in late 80s is, is also important. So from the first perform from my first performance I worked uh, with the composers, but very different kind of composers. Some of them like uh, Mitya Vrhovnik Smrekar, one of the most important composer in uh, in Europe uh, these days. Uh, he's very I can say classical composer, and he he can uh, compose for uh, contemporary opera uh, for the very professional musicians. But he likes to work also with the with the actors. So he's al also very open to very different types of uh, of musical expression. And from other side, I worked a lot with the group with the hip hop groups, with the rock groups, and especially uh, one. I mean, famous rock group uh, uh, they call Late Three. Uh, they are like a post-punk group. And the first performance we created together like um, 19 years ago was Fedra by Marina Svetaeva, famous uh, avant-garde Russian writer. And uh, we tried to connect uh, um, uh, ex vocal expression and especially uh, in the realization of poetry on the stage, like uh, Marina Svetaeva. And our last work was uh, a recreation of Euripides Cyclops. Mm -hmm. uh, because I decided to treat the, the text with them, so we decomposed completely the Euripides satirical uh, play uh, Cyclops in, in very particular parts. And we created something which which was like a, we can call rock album in 90s or... Uh, so uh, each part of the performance was connected with some, uh, some idea. It, it is like uh, I can compare uh, the, the, the common work of uh, Michel Houellebecq with the Iggy Pop. So the connection with the text and very intensive work on the on the poetry with the vocal and the instrumental and body performance uh, approach. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, I can say I work with uh, classical composers, classical uh, in the sense they work with the classical instruments, with uh, educated uh, mm -hmm. singers to very, very uh, punk editions.
But you do not tend to include non-actors in your uh, theatre. I include very, very often known uh, professional actors. That was maybe a result of my reading of Pasolini's manifestos of, uh, con of new theatre from uh, 68. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as I told you in the beginning, uh, uh, my basic education was connected uh, more with the university and not with the art school in Zagreb. And so uh, this milieu is more connected with the known professionals, and especially with the art and avant-garde movement, movements from 70s. And the, in this movement, uh, very often the known professional, I mean, when I say known professional, they are artists, but not the educated uh, uh, actors or directors. Uh, as you know, uh, Marina Abramovic, uh, she came from Yugoslavia and she influenced not just she, but uh, his, uh, her mentor, a very famous uh, conceptual artist, Tomislav Gotovac. He was like a father for all my generation. And he, he is a symbol of, how, when I say known professional, he was the most known and most important uh, artist uh, of his time. But he wanted to put together really people from the, really from the street, very uh, anonym people with artists of high-level international uh, uh, renome. And that, uh, if, you, if you look well, the, the earliest work of Marina Abramovic, that's the, I mean, the very influenced by, uh, by Tomislav Gotovac. And as I uh, told you, I invited rock musicians, but also the, the, the popular musicians in the, my interpretation of Seneca's uh, Oedipus, uh, tra tragedy. I invited three um, three women from one uh, village, forty kilometers from Split. They never work for the theater. They're really uh, women from the really from the countryside. And in the period of two months, they worked with us, but really like uh, high professional actors. That was one, and the, also with the with the dancers. Uh, also with the sports, uh, and when you do professional that, sportsman. Oh, yeah. When you do that, uh, are you looking for authenticity? Are you looking for uh, new ways of doing theater? Um, when you decide to integrate these non-actors, non-professionals, mm -hmm. uh, what is it that attracts you in, in their experiences? Uh, I can. Uh, offer you an example of Pasolini's Pilade. Uh, I worked on like uh, 15 years ago and uh, in one scene I had three different types of uh, performative approach. Uh, one of the performance in, in this uh, Pasolini's work was Dunja Vesovic. She's like uh, one of the most known Wagnerian uh, singer of uh, late 20th century. She she worked with the Karajan, with uh, Robert Wilson in uh, uh, on the stage. So really, probably one of the most uh, known opera uh, name. And uh, from other side, in same scene, I invited one uh, rock singer, but rock singer really from uh, from the very very alternative scene, not the known. Uh, a rock star, but really someone who is punk singer. And the third, I mean, in, in the same scene, was the famous actress Anna Karic, which is like the most known and most high professional uh, level. You know, she's like a professor of acting. And uh, can you imagine the meeting of three complete different experience? And what, uh, why? Because uh, that's my uh, connection with the text. Pasolini's text is not, uh, I can say, uh, it's not diamond. It's a crazy and violent and wild structure. And it's a mixture of uh, Aeschylus elements, of, of Aeschylus tragedy, of something very uh, philosophical. And from uh, third side, it's, uh, it's like a contemporary diary of uh, Italian intellectual in late... Uh, 60s. Uh, so the mixture, um, the uh, 
Anna, I mean the professional actress, uh, she was chorus in Pilates. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the rock, the punk singer, uh, he was like a uh, messenger. And opera singer was, uh, she was performed Athena. And three complete different, not just the vocal presence, but also performative approach. Because the professional, high professional actress, she was really into the interpretation of, uh, of course. I mean, vocal interpretation, physical interpretation, some kind of perfection. Uh, opera uh, singer, she mixed because the composer composed one part of uh, Athena's uh, monologue like... Uh, Mm, like a comp musical composition. But what was more important for me, not this m music part, but the way how she uh, did the interpretation of the text. And for me, it was connected with the uh, Marguerite Duras idea because uh, she said, I don't like uh, how the actors, uh, how the good actors interpret the text because they destroy the text. Why? She said they are so professional and they appropriate the text and they, uh, they present some kind of very strange interpretation. And she said, but when someone known professional or when the writer uh, pronounce and deck the text, you can you can follow really the, the the perfect structure, the relief of the text. So you can see the mountains, the rivers, uh, the known perfections. And the third uh, performer, the, the punk performer, he was very inspirative in vocal uh, interpretation of the text. So in one scene, I had three complete different... So for some of uh, of critics or uh, it's it was mm, so known uh, maybe i i like very much the notions of uh, wild art uh, wild art who mix the reality and the high level of the fiction with with some essayistic and theoretical parts and uh, after that, I continued to work with this um, uh, punk musician, and I think after that we we had more than ten collaborations. Uh, last, I mean, last summer uh, we worked on adaptation of Michel Houellebecq's uh, Atomized novel, and now after I mean more than fifteen years of of the collaboration, he developed very particular approach to to the text. And for me, when I work in in some very specific texts like Welbeck's, who mixed really the essayistic parts with the fiction, with the journalist structure. I mean, it's important for me to have the voice and also the physical presence of someone who is not a uh, complete professional actor. Why? Because he's so open and he's, uh, his, if I don't want to use the word interpretation, is uh it's very wild sometimes it's perfect i mean in the vocal level uh, it's very interesting in intellectual level because his uh his approach is not the approach of professional actors but the result is fascinating for for me there is also um a very uh, interesting point on this project um, when you were invited for a call to met, you decided to accept and taking some risks, I imagine. Um, what is it particularly in this project, in this way of working with a young team of actors that are professionally involved in theatre? Um, and what kind of work are you doing with them? Is it uh, a collaborative work? Is it a formative work? Uh, just for us to know, since you're here also within this context of Ecole de Met, uh, how is this challenge uh, going and running through these late, latest uh, weeks? Uh, for some strange reasons, I started my uh, director's work in the theatre in uh, Ecole in Rennes, in France, uh, which was very uh, known and even now uh, a school 
uh, in France, uh, established by Christian Collen, and after that, uh, led by Stanislas Nordé. And I was invited many times in Rennes and Saint Etienne uh, to take part of uh, like a guest professor. And uh, this school is very particular because the I mean the the system of uh, education and the creation of knowledge it's not so uh, it's something in the in the border between university style very practical uh, approach and very um, very open discussions and so i propose very different lectures i i repeat always the, something connected with with the text i i was working on uh, on Pirandello, on especially on Marina Cvetaeva's work, and one season we decide to work six months on uh, Elfride Jelinek's uh, writing. Uh, she's not so known as a theater uh, writer in France. Of course, after uh, Nobel, she's very known in uh, literary world, but I think. Mm, people in the theater generally is not so connected with the, this very specific and particular writing. And my idea to propose Elfride Jelinek, it's in a way similar to my work with the uh, Ecole de Maitre. I, for me, much more um, innovative uh, for me and for the, uh, for the young students or young actors, it's to propose some textual material, not to work on the fiction, I mean, I think for me, it's not uh, so interested to propose like a Shakespeare plays or even Coltes play to come and work with the young actors and to say, please go in this way of inter interpretation. But I, uh, I, I like to come to the stage, I think stage, it can be really the small uh, experimental stage, like in Ranciere's essay, you know, like a teacher, but who is known perfect teacher. So a uh, teacher who wants to, to learn something about the material. And for me, uh, Capital, uh, as I mentioned before, in Croatian National Theatre, where I work now, we founded the Philosophical Theatre. And one of our guests in last season was uh, Thomas Piketty. And for me, was absolutely fascinated the way how he communicate with the audience. Uh, he's a professor, but for me, in the same time, he's very, uh, I mean, he's he's very good performer. And uh, when I read the book, uh, it was, I mean, like a uh, shock because many of artists today try to to discover what's happened uh, with this world, not just in the level uh, of arts, of uh, changes of styles, of, uh, 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 of theories, but we want to, to understand how, is, how our profession is connected with the economy. And as we know, uh, in the time of crisis from 2008, everything, I mean, each part of human activity is really connected with the economy. And the economy started to be practically the first science. And from other side, uh, we, as I, uh, when I say we, the people from art, from the schools, generally we don't know uh, a lot about this material. And my question was, uh, how is possible? Because we speak all day about the conditions uh, in the production, uh, financial conditions in the theater houses, uh, in the festivals, but from other side, we don't know what's happened really with the, with the economy today. And uh, that was the principal reason why I proposed this material, and especially the, the young actors, you know, my generation was connected in some way uh, with uh, uh, Marx Capital, special, especially in the, in the countries of, in, in Eastern Europe. And uh, uh, today, when you ask young people, what is capital, but uh, try to explain me in simple words, what's the capital, you know, they don't know. And they live in, in the world based on this uh, fetish uh, word. And that was the, really the, the, the point, uh, how we started, uh, how we created. Uh, and my idea was to create two different levels. And 
in some uh, presentation, especially in uh, in Udine and in Zagreb, in this uh, touring cycle, because we had more time in Udine in Zagreb than in Coimbra or mm-hmm. Brussels, we offered two different uh, uh, presentations. Uh, one presentation was completely uh, focused on uh, uh, reading of the economical aspect of the book. So in the morning, uh, the, the actors, uh, uh, they were able to explain to the audience really because they they studied for one month the the book and not just this book but the all uh, possible materials for that period about the contemporary economy and in the evening presentation we uh, we presented the performative structure of the book so in the morning the the spectators they can ask uh, many many different and very particular questions and uh, i used also uh, arto's approach to the material that was very strange in the beginning because the book is uh, the book uh, has 18 chapters and we are, I mean, the actors, they are 20. And I said, okay, the 18 actors will choose by really by coincidence one chapter and they will be the specialist for this chapter, but real specialist. And then two others, I mean, the 19 and 20, they were the specialist, I mean, the, the small specialist for uh, Karl Marx capital. Uh, and after reading, after a very concentrated and focused approach to the to the chapters, uh, in the morning we presented the knowledge, really like in university, about the particular chapter. And uh, in the evening, during the performative presentation, we try to uh, using the Artos approach to offer some kind. I can I can say of performances. So actual state of, of the work, uh, you can see here in, in Coimbra, it's the composition of the small uh, performances. It's the real composition. So from one side, the spectator can follow the book, especially if a spectator knows uh, Piketty's book, uh, he can or she can uh, follow really the, uh, the performance by chapters. And I think for me, that's also uh, connected with the Yves Michaud's idea of what is contemporary art. I, I, I think the actor is not uh, just someone who is reproductive artist, who, who take the text and who, uh, who make some very particular and very high level professional interpretation of fictional text, but the actors a uh, contemporary actor must be really someone who is between uh, theater, cinema, visual arts, theory, uh, philosophy, uh, journalism, and contemporary life. And this, uh, I mean, this work, this structure is really, uh, I can say, is really dirty mixture uh, of different approach and not the theatrical work connected with the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in, in these uh, work sessions with them, uh, your, uh, you were, um, how did you act uh, to put together mm-hmm. this composition of parts? Um, w- w- was it by intervention, by uh, editing? Uh, how did it occur? The first proposition was really to to learn, to know the I mean the maximum about the chapter, uh, to discuss with the colleagues who are uh, in the same part of the book, and then to change the the knowledge, and then after uh, knowing the material, uh, try to create some performative structures. And it was very difficult in the beginning, you know, for the actors was, you know, they asked me, how can I create something on the stage with this material, which is completely uh, univer- universal um, material. And then uh, I proposed them some kind of, 
I, I call them derivations of Artaud's exercises because uh, Artaud never wrote the real exercises for the actors, but reading uh, during the years and years his, uh, his books, his texts, uh, I created for myself some kind of reinterpretation of his uh, work and I created some specific uh, exercises and I offer this material uh, to the actors and in one moment it was real explosion. They connected in very, uh, I mean, innovative, very open way, this really uh, radical and sometimes strange and enigmatic uh, are those propositions which are in sometimes very close to to the notions of uh, of hysteria or madness which uh, described by Foucault with very um, very uh, focused knowledge about the economy proposed by Piketty and finally uh, it was very useful to them you know to to put the theatrical or very strange mental uh, propositions to the very, I can say, aseptic uh, material. And then uh, in each new situation, in each new theater, uh, in each new space, we make the new combination. So it's not the fixed uh, material because we are able to change and transform completely. Because, I mean, the complete material can be more than 20 hours and so sometimes probably here we will present something between two uh two and three hours i don't know yet mm -hmm. for tomorrow so it's completely open and then i put it also in this structure uh as as you told in the beginning uh i wanted to have some uh, music part in the in the presentation and we choose the pasolini's poetry uh, from 60s and the composer uh, Smrekar, he he composed really. And then, as as we worked in the beginning in Udine, we choose uh, Pasolini's poetry in uh, Friulan language. So it's not even in Italian, but uh, the, from the region of his of his mother. So it's it's also we we can ask. Uh, what is the connection Pasolini Piketty? Why Pasolini? It's really uh, the reason was because we we worked in Udine, so close to the uh, to the Pasolini's uh, uh, house uh, first school, and so we decided to make some a small homage to to him in, in the performance. But as we know, he was, uh, w we use some elements of his novel Petrolio, which is completely, uh, I mean, which is the critic of capitalism in in 70s. And probably it was one of the most interesting works in 70s, uh, discovered many, many years later. And we used in, in some versions the elements of, uh, is critics of uh, uh, of capitalism. Just a final question um, mm -hmm. about the theatre scene today. Um, festivals are, have a very long tradition within the theatre history, uh, and y you also have a strong relation to festivals, not even the established festivals, but your own uh, festivals, the, the festivals that you put uh, together as was the case in the World Festival of Theatre in Zagreb. Um, what were your motivations to um, create and to uh, deal with this um, cultural format of festival today? Uh, in late 60s, I mean, in the period, uh, in the first period of explosions of uh, of the festivals of contemporary theater because as we know in the in the real beginning the festivals in Avignon or Edinburgh in even Dubrovnik in Yugoslavia were more connected with the you can say classical theater in the beginning but the transformation uh, was in in 60s and the very uh, very important moment for the uh, internal uh, international uh, 
part of promotion of theater, uh, took part in, in late 60s and 70s. Uh, and in Yugoslavia, Bitev was the first promoter, then Eurokaz. And there is, I think, important tradition to, I mean, tradition to invite the foreign uh, companies and then go and uh, show the performances in in many different places. And when I started the theater for uh, to, to do the theater, for me, uh, was the same importance to go to uh, Cuba or Venezuela or to go to the important festivals like uh, Zurich Theater Festival or uh, Kunsten Festival des Arts or NET Festival in Moscow. So uh, one of the, my teacher, Ellen Stewart, uh, she founded La Mama Theater and I worked a lot with her. Uh, she promoted this idea of international theater. And La Mama in the late 60s was one of the first really international founded theater and companies. And as you know, uh, the work of Peter Brook, of uh, Ariane Nushkin, uh, of many, many uh, theater uh, visionaries in, in 70s open, offer to us today this idea of international uh, collaboration. And I think in, in small countries like uh, the theater is not conceived for me to be just presented in some particular uh, uh, country or nation. And especially for you or for us in Portugal, Croatia, in small countries, uh, what is the, if we stay just in, uh, in our uh, territories in territories of our language how we can uh, how we can work how we how we can deal how we can exchange ideas and the festivals are you know sometimes it's very uh, there are a lot of networks like ITM or other things who are maybe too much um, productions mm -hmm. networks for me, this artistic uh, collaboration is much, much more important than the level of production, I want to say. And that's the reason uh, why uh, I and my, my small company from Ljubljana and Zagreb, we wanted to establish the connections with the African actors. We worked uh, uh, in, in Africa many times, we invited the the actors from Africa, from Asia, from South America. I think uh, today we have much, much more possibilities than than the people in 60s and 70s. And we repeat all times this uh, mantra crisis. I think uh, if we compare contemporary world, our world today, we are much more, I mean, rich than in 60s. We have much more possibi possibilities to, uh, to communicate. So we can communicate uh, with the artists directly uh, uh, from Africa to uh, to Russia, but we are very often too lazy to use the this possible these enormous uh, possibilities to communicate with the people and the festivals. Uh, if I cut this productional and promotional and the capitalistic way of uh, presentation, the festival can help to, I mean, to bring people together uh, to exchange ideas, text, voices, uh, bodies, uh, projections for for some future world which can be very humanistic. Mm. Um, the mini theater that you uh, founded with Robert Walt back in the in the 2000, year 2000, um, uh, what were its main goals or what are currently its main goals in the actual European context? context? And um, it seems that you wanted a place to experiment deeper into theater directing uh, and expand the languages and, and formal traditions. Is that so? Uh, yes, Mini Theater was established uh, 15 years ago, uh, especially in the country without the tradition of private theater. And uh, as you know, all theaters in, in our regions are 
uh, supported by cities or governments and uh, which is a very good idea i think and uh, we are very proud to be part of this system uh, where theater is really public service and not just the service but uh, where is where theater is public necessity because uh, theater is not uh, just uh, entertainment or theater is not uh, to you know, to invite the audience to spend the nice and cute, amazing night, but theater uh, in from 18th, 19th century was also created to be um, dialectic, uh, to be uh, to be philosophical, if you want, or to be scholar, and uh, we want to keep this notion and. Uh, but uh, in the uh, in the new countries like uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, uh, Bosnia, we uh, I think theater people wanted to create something new in night, something new, uh, which is the new form. Uh, before uh, we had just the cities uh, or national theaters or regional theaters, and we wanted to promote something. Uh, different from the other theaters. And Ljubljana, where we founded Mini Theater, is a very interesting case because Ljubljana is one of the smallest capital in Europe with strong um, uh, theatrical tradition. Uh, so in Ljubljana, in really small, small city, uh, you have opera, ballet, national theater, city theater, theater for youth audience, puppet theater. Uh, I think like eight theater uh directly uh subventioned by by the government or the cities and as you know in repertory theater you have the 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 main lines of dramaturgy the main lines of the uh, of the repertoire creations repertory creations and uh, we wanted to to create some uh, very small innovative uh, mobile theater uh, and especially connected with the authors like uh, Müller, uh, Coltes, uh, Pasolini, uh, Knut Hamsun, uh, Robert Walzer. Um, we wanted to, to perform for first time some of the, we, we call them classical moment of modernity. That's a paradox. Uh, classes, uh, classic and modernism and postmodernism. And this paradox is the definition of mini theater. So our first performance was the, uh, one of the, our first performance was The Snow White by Robert Walzer, which was the first translation because, you know, uh, Walzer was one of the most important uh, writer in 30s, but completely unknown for many, many decades. And that was, we ordered the, the translation. That was also the case with uh, some pieces of Heiner Müller. We ordered the, the first translation of, uh, of Macbeth much before, uh, for instance, the, the, the French translation of, uh, of Müller's Macbeth. And uh, we also promoted the, uh, the first place of uh, Bernard Marie Coltes, the place uh, like adaptation of crime and punishment uh, of uh, Bible songs of the song. So uh, we wanted to create small theater uh, with a programmation completely different from the uh, from the repertory of other theaters in Slovenia. And uh, we invited the actors from uh, France, Spain, uh, uh, Africa, as I told in the beginning, uh, and especially the actors from uh, from the region. And in many performances, we mix the language, different type of uh, of experiences. And that is uh, mini theater. Probably is really connected with the uh, uh, with the ideas of Ellen Stewart and La Mama Theater from 60s, 70s, and 80s. So put together different different artists different opinions, different styles, and not to create the hierarchical structure of the theater, which is very 
often case in Central and Eastern Europe. So when I say the the pyra uh, pyramidal structure, director, author, and um, actors. So we wanted to create the theater with no limits, no no borders between different uh, professions.